Go. Well, hello and welcome to another Dev Nation Live Tech Talk. We're coming to you from all over the planet like we always do. In my case, I'm still here in Raleigh, North Carolina, right? But we also have Edson Yanaga, who's going to be a co-host with us today. He's going to be hanging out. Say hi, Edson. Hello, folks. Uh, it's good to see you here. And yes, now we have two hosts. It's hard to tell us apart, but I don't have a goatee. Yes. Yeah, I, I got to get more facial hair. But you're wearing glasses again. <laughs> exactly. Just yeah. to confuse people. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going live right now, and this is a live event. We're going to probably break some things, have some fun, break the Internet. But we have a very special guest today. His name is Abhishek, and he's going to tell us more about himself. I want you to introduce yourself so that people know kind of what your background is and what you do at Red Hat before we dive into the technical content. So I work with a team in R&D section in Red Hat where we focus on contributing to the operator world, mostly middleware operators. So I've been working with various middleware teams who are writing their operator for the OpenShift and the Kuba. Okay. So middleware technology things in the Java ecosystem like Keycloak as well as OpenShift and Kubernetes. So you're one of the few people that have the dual skill set of Java-based middleware and OpenShift Kubernetes. Yes. All right. Well, fantastic. We'll go ahead and screen share. Let's see if that comes through the internet connection. And let's go ahead and try to run your presentation and your demonstration. My name is Abhishek Kosarwal. Today we are going to see how we can secure your Vue.js application using Geeklink. Let's see the agenda. So today we will see a uh, key club overview, two concepts, integration pattern, integration pattern with view app, end-to-end -end flow, token refresh and token validation, demo uh, following with the Q&A session. Let's understand what and why of key club. So what is key club? Key club is an open source identity solution for your modern application, APIs, native applications, desktop applications, mobile applications, or any, any kind of platform or uh, architecture that you want to secure with a single sign-on mechanism. Now see why you need Keycloak. So it's a reliable solution. As we say, Red Hat is built on Red Hat products. So if you visit any Red Hat web application, it is secured using Keycloak or RHSSO, which is downstream version of Keycloak. Strong community support and customizable architecture. So you can customize and you can also reach out to community if you are stuck with any of the problem. They are very responsive. And third point is portability. So you can migrate your application from different different cloud and you can migrate your key club architecture as well so it gives you a portable solution you can export the entire configuration very easily and you can even do the upgrade very easily quick recap about oauth 2 and open id connect these are security specification protocols that most of you are familiar with so open id connect gives you all three where if you say or two you are only getting authorization but in connect in in case of open id connect you get all three features and you can also say it's a subset of open id connect and all this security protocol works on the delegation uh, basically that you can see in this cute picture so you are delegating your security responsibility to key clock let's understand the core concepts here so this this architecture diagram will give you an, a good understanding of what comes with keycloak so in the keycloak ui dashboard you can configure all those things very easily so main configuration goes around this realm configuration so realm is like a namespace which isolate your configuration and you can configure your client, your roles, your security defense mechanism. And it comes with identity provider like OpenID Connect, SAML, or you can also do social logins with using the identity provider setup. And you can also uh, allow your LDAP or Kerberos user to get authenticated using Keycloak. 
so realm with realm you can create multiple realm it is said that uh, you should use master realm for administrative purpose and you can use different realms for uh, actual use uh, let's move app integration so for integrating any application with keyclock you just need to do simple things one is have a create a realm if you want to do some separation like for your external external users or internal users you can create two realm and in the external realm you can just need to create a client for any application you need to create a client for the integration when you create a client you need to provide two things one is which protocol you want to use second thing is which resource and what you want to secure and each application your needs to use this key clock adapter which comes with language specifications like if you want to use javascript adapter you can install npm you can use backend adapter for java applications or you can also get android or iOS SDK adapters so these adapter allow you to uh, do a request response kind of mechanism with a key clock api endpoints over the https protocol so one thing is uh, important that you should use https when you communicate over your client let's move to the integration pattern with vue.js so in this demo uh, i have created a dev nation realm which uh, under which i have created a client view app you can call it any name you want with your view application you just need to install this key clock javascript adapter you can install from the npm registry or you can download from the key clock website so when a user wants to access your view application uh, your application will redirect or delegate your auth authentication to the key clock server so you will see a key clock authentication page where user enter uh, his credentials once user enter his credentials he can he gets redirected to the view your view application where he can access the secured resources so this is the very simple flow and later on once this process is done your key clock adapter uh, is responsible to communicate with the key clock server to exchange the token we'll see how that happens so to understand the end-to-end -end architecture the, i have created one quarkus backend api for this front-end application so same process i've created a quarkus pff client in the key clock under the same realm and with the quarkus you can take quarkus key clock adapter and that you can use to protect your rest endpoint so i have very simple user rest endpoint your Vue.js application is getting token from the key server which token can be passed uh, using the request header as a bearer token so with every request you need to pass this token to get a response from the secured endpoint and we will see how the token validation uh, in the next slide so in this picture you can see uh, your key clock expose certain rest endpoints for every realm so I, there are many rest endpoints but i have specifically mentioned two which are important to us one is this cert endpoint and another one is this token endpoint your front end application will be requesting token from this endpoint or sending a refresh token so you can have a loop of uh, interval where you request a token before your access token gets expired so you can keep getting your token refreshed it is important to refresh your token for the security purpose so, so if let's say somebody gets access to your token then it can be a security breach for you so you need to keep rotating your token so and expiring your token so it it uh, becomes a secure environment for you 
and your caucus pattern during the startup will fetch this JSON web key set. So this is done internally and you can also do it by yourself if you are writing a new architecture or any applic backend application that you don't see a adapter is provided. So you can fetch this JSON web key set which is used to validate any change JWT token passed from your front-end application and token validation comes with three things that you must check one is your algorithm for the header that you have used second thing you can check the payload in the payload it comes with certain parameters so you can check the client or you can check the user based on your choice you can check more details and third thing you can verify the signature using this uh, key set so this is the process of validating a JWT token that you can do by yourself or the focus adapter do a lot of things for you. So let's see the demo here. So I'm using Keycloak version 10 and I'm the bin directory. So you can just go to bin directory and I'm running in the standalone mode. So I already created an admin user for my key club instance. So this is the main dashboard for key clock where you, I have created already created multiple realms. This is the master realm which is used to administrate the your key, key clock instance. So we, I have created a dev nation realm and under that realm I have created two clients. One is view app client and another one is Quarkus client and you can create a client from here so basically you can give any name and you can create the root url so let's understand the client little better so three things are mandatory one is your client id and this is where you provide the protocol and access type so for client side applications is similar to a javascript application or your Vue.js application the access type should be public because you you are exposing this configuration to your client side and this will be your boot url of your application so once the authentication is done where you want to redirect so this is this will be same this one is important uh, for handling the course issue so cross origin request issues so if you are like using in dev environment or multiple people are using your application then you can do a wildcard entry so those domains won't face the uh, cross origin issue but if you are running in production you can use either plus which allow the subdomains or you can only use the actual URL, which is much better. For the Quarkus PFF, I have created like the client protocol will be OpenID Connect and access type will be bearer because we just wanted to validate the JWT token here. We don't want to be public. We want to just validate the tokens. You can also choose confidential. So confidential can be choose if if your backend is using the login flow. Let's say your view application is running as a embedded within your Quarkus application. In that kind of setup, you should choose a bearer only setup. And here you can see the realm settings so this is one important place where you can set your token lifespan so here it's configured as five minute by default but you can change according to your need let's understand the application code
So this is our view application code here. And this is very standard application that I have generated using the view CLI command and I have imported the key club JavaScript adapter using npm install or yarn add and I'm using a view logger. So this is our configuration that we will be providing to the adapter that your realm, your client ID, your onload, what kind of mechanism you want to do. There is another you can do check SSO and in onload with login required you will see the login page it will always force to see the login page if user is not authenticated here i'm ins instantiating the key club instance by providing the init configuration and with the key club in it i am providing this onload configuration here so what action needs to be done after it loads this logic so once the download happen, it will redirect you to the key club page. Once you put your credentials, then you get a promise object from the key club instance. And in this response, you can check whether you are authenticated or not. If you are authenticated, then you can initialize your view application or you can do the rendering part. So here I am passing my key club instance as a prop so i can use it further and you can also store your key club token in the local storage so if you don't want to pass this as a prop and you want to use local storage you can do that as well but it has some implication from the security standpoint and this is my interval set interval logic where i'm basically doing a clock looping kind of um, check on whether the token is refreshed or not or like what's the time cycle of uh, my token is going to expire so i'm keep updating my token so this is your refresh token so every time with like every six second the set interval will work and update token also require a minimum validity second input so this is how you are rotating your token you can change according to your need and i have a default setup like this but it's up to you let's also see your backend little bit so this is the focus if you haven't seen this uh, this is very easy you in the application property you just need to provide two fields one is your ydc client id and the url and this is very simple java focus rest endpoint where i'm have a user endpoint and i'm using this annotation which comes with the focus adapter for the key cloak where you can just annotate and it will be your secure endpoint if i remove that it will be work like normal and here I'm basically returning this user model and not doing anything fancy here. Just one thing, I'm providing some extra headers for my application uh, for avoiding any kind of cross origin issues. So this is I'm allowing any requests from my front end. So let's start this and see in action. Start with my backend and my front end. So let's first hit the back end. Okay, so this is a very simple Quarkus application, and I have one user API endpoint. If I try to hit it, I will get 401 unauthenticated now let's try our front-end application so as you can see in the front-end application you can do your you can user can provide your credentials or if user is not available you can do a registration or i have also enabled uh, identity access using github so we'll see how we can do that 
So I already created one user first time try to log in using that. So this is our Vue.js application secured by the key club and here the JWT token which we received from the key club server and this is the response we received from our caucus backend. So this is a very simple application and nothing fancy here. I'm just sending a token and getting response from my caucus backend. And let's see our local storage. So you can see our token is stored and the refresh token is stored. These are stored by the Geek Lock adapter where it stores the information to a callback to the Geek Lock server. So you will see many of these configuration. And this is where our set interval is working, where it's checking when when the token is refreshed or not. So let's try to change a bit and update the token lifespan to one minute. Also, let's try to change this. So you can see I'm trying to force my application and the key clock to refresh token very quickly. So we can understand that. And you can do other things as well. You can also see the user session. So you can see with the session details and you can also remove the session if you want to revoke all session from here. And I also showed you the GitHub login. So you can just add a identity provider. So I'm using the GitHub one I already created. So it's very easy. You just need to go to your GitHub account and you create under your personal apps. You can create a OAuth application under the development set settings. And when you create a new app, you will see two fields. One is client ID, one is secret. So you can configure it and you can enable it. So we can do that. So you can see the token is refreshed. So your token is refreshed here. If you see, if I refresh the page, you can also see that token is updated here. And now let's try to log in using the GitHub. So this is the app I have created in the GitHub uh, developer setting and uh, here I am using the authorization part. We are not authenticating it. And once the authentication is done, I am redirected back to my application. And you are seeing that you are getting the response and you are getting the same kind of flow. So nothing changed as the user is taken from my GitHub account. So this is done. All right, thank you for hanging out with me. Next week, Edson may or may not be with us because he's starting to take a little vacation time for the summer. But we're going to have Edson hanging out with us more often uh, in this Thursday session. And then you're going to see more of us also on the Tuesday session once we give birth to that. And so thank you guys for your time today. You guys have my email address. If you need me, feel free to email me at burrettrehada.com. You guys get the emails, and you can sit reply on the emails. And give us ideas. I did take some ideas from um, – uh, Casillo here, you know, so advanced topics on Keycloak, things like authorization services, complex policy permissions. I made note of that. We definitely have some Keycloak folks who can come talk to us more about those advanced settings. All right. Well, thank you so much. You guys have a great day and we'll sign off for now.